from the banner offices along the inner harbor it is the banner baseball show paul mancano and kyle goon staring at me as if i shouted in his face far too early in the morning which is probably true i'm staring at you as if you ate a hot dog and i'm, I'm regretting the results <laughs> we are going to talk about our hot dog we're also going to talk about on today's show jackson holiday's first hit we're also going to talk about colton Kowser absolutely mashing at the plate but Kyle, boy, we we chopped that thing down in a video at All Banner Sports. If you haven't yet watched it, the warehouse dog, foot long. There's a pit beef in there. There is horseradish infused brick sauce, queso fundido. A lot of words that I'm not familiar with. Uh, yeah. If if I would uh, I I would take a barbershop approach to that maybe take a little <laughs> off the top you know what i mean uh, yeah it, it was it's kind of an experience uh, i don't know if i agree with the overall product i mean i think it's <laughs> i think it's better in in theory than in practice but you is know, it even that good in theory shoot shoot i mean if you want to give it a try maybe you and i, I want to say a loved one but i'm not sure a loved one should yeah. eat that thing so maybe someone you're sort of mid on you know someone you're sort of like eh this is this is fine yeah and make them eat most of it like like, <laughs> like I, I did ate. to you yeah and yeah. i did eat most of it and uh wow what a what an item we have there i'm glad you now understand where where your social standing is <laughs> yes exactly all right well we are going to talk baseball on today's show let's talk first and foremost about jackson holiday getting off the snide because he was over in his first three big league games of course the orioles swept the red Sox in boston they come home, they lose two or three to the Milwaukee Brewers. Jackson Holiday sat out on Saturday's game because they were facing a lefty. He gets back in the lineup on Sunday. He really struggled for those first three games, three and a half games, really. And it was him getting behind in a lot of counts. It was him not being able to hit uh, a lot of sliders, a lot of off-speed pitches. You wrote about on the BaltimoreBanner.com, where everybody can subscribe $1 for six months, about... How much pressure there is on somebody who is the number one prospect in baseball, the son of a big leaguer who's sitting right behind former big leaguer sitting right behind home plate next to Cal Ripken Jr. And he's 20 years old and he's coming up in this on a team that is hoping to compete for a playoff spot. And he understandably experienced some natural struggles, but it's rare that you get a player of that, which of that caliber with that much pressure on him at that age who has to come up and deliver right away. And it's just very, very, very difficult situation to be thrown in. Yeah, I, and first of all, I want to preface this by saying you and I have seen enough of Jackson that we know he's going to be good. Yes. He's going <laughs> to be good. He's a good player. He's looked good at every level. And I think even I had kind of succumbed to this idea that because you know someone has a certain trajectory, because you know someone has been good up through this point in the career, you think, oh, yeah, figure it out right away yeah it'll be and, fine. and not only did he not figure out right away it, it took him uh what 12 13 major league 13 at bats yeah to, to get that first hit off an, a 99 mile per hour heater um so yeah, yeah i just i was feeling some of that pressure i think by association here i was i mean that 12th and 13th at bat uh, uh yesterday i was just kind of tied up in knots watching jackson yes. just just at the plate being like oh it's because it, you're starting to anticipate hey, this might not go well, but finally to have him rip uh, that first one off and and get a run, get the go-ahead run for a win yeah. on Sunday in a crucial series, um, I think it just has to relieve everyone. Yeah. Um, Jackson, of course, most of all. Yeah, you could feel the kind of pressure building, and it was, it was an uncomfortable watch at a certain point up in the press box because you just wanted it for him because you knew how much pressure he was putting on himself primarily and how much pressure he felt it's and Orioles fans were patient with him you know they gave him a standing ovation in his home debut uh, they continue to cheer the heck out of him uh, you expect some natural growing pains not everybody is going to be Gunnar Henderson and hit a home run in his first big league game you know Adley Rutschman it took him six weeks to hit his first homer and from there he took off and it could take a while for Jackson Holiday to find consistent success because he was also facing some nasty pitches in his first four games. I think these pitchers were giving them their best stuff saying, welcome to the big leagues, kid. You're 20 years old. This is what life is like in the big leagues because he faced six four seam fastballs in his first 13 plate appearances, which is absurd. He saw 13 cutters, 
He saw eight changeups, eight sliders, four sinkers, four sweepers, three curveballs, and three split finger fastballs. So he saw the kitchen sink thrown at him. And essentially, he was, like he wrote on the banner.com, he was getting in these 0 2 counts, three straight 0 2 counts in his third big league game. And once you get behind like that, even a, a disciplined hitter like Jackson Holiday is going to struggle. Yeah. And I, I wrote this. He's so mature that he knows the ways in which he's struggling. He could, yes, he, could, he was struggling because he's 20, but he's also, you know, he knows this game so well. He has his big league dad and he's able to articulate, yeah, this is why this, this at bat fell apart. And I felt really bad for him when I was, we were kind of going through that process of, you know, which we had to do. We had to ask him about the, these at bats, how he's feeling, what the pressure's like. Um, but it, you can kind of see how the approach is going to mature. Yes. And once he kind of um, catches up with all the ups, ups and downs of major league pitching, gets used to the motion, gets used to the spin, um, gets used to, I mean, the, you mentioned it earlier, getting behind in counts. That was a Tough. critical, I mean, all those at-bats that he did not succeed in, it, it seemed like he was behind in every one. He was behind every one on uh, Friday for his debut. So I think once he kind of catches up with that, the maturity and the approach and his knowledge of the game, which would be lies his 20 year old age is really going to serve him well. Yeah. And we both thought that Jackson holiday should have made the big league team out of camp where he hit three eleven, and he was starting to figure things out against lefties. Of course, he doesn't didn't make the team. Michael Elias sent him back down to triple a said, we need to get him more at bats against left-handed pitchers said, we need to give him more experience at second base. We're going to go with Tony Kemp who, ended up going hitless in his Orioles career as he is the elected free agency instead of accepting the assignment to Norfolk. Jackson Holiday gets the call back up, and we were thinking, finally, you know, he is ready. He's ready to go. But you also do see, you have seen in the first four big league games, a couple of the areas of rawness in Jackson Holiday, which is understandable. And this is the, the place where you're going to iron things out. It's I remember people saying when Adley Rutschman first came up and he had his struggles that they should have sent him back down. And we got the same thing with Gunnar Henderson at the start of the 2023 season when he went through his struggles. They have to figure it out at the big league level. This is the place to do it. There's not much else he can gain from being down in AAA. And Michael Elias even said, because of the number of injuries that have happened to pitchers around baseball, and you're seeing a matriculation of... <laughs> Great, very talented pitchers go up to the big leagues. There are very few good pitchers left in AAA. Which is why, from the outset, I, I felt like the justification didn't make much sense. And, right. And our columnist, John Mioli, went into this at the time much much harder than than I could. But it, it just, there's a learning curve. There's a hump that you cannot get over by playing more AAA baseball. Yes. By being a dominant player in AAA, which, I mean, the whole Norfolk Tides lineup is yeah, dominant. That's, that's what's frustrating but, right but, now. <laughs> but it's, it's especially with a prospect of Jackson's caliber, who you think is going to just alter the franchise in a meaningful way, um, he, he's just not going to get over the hump by playing more AAA. Right. I mean, the left-hander thing, all the good left-handers are up in the big leagues. Yeah. And and it's just the, the justifications didn't really make sense. So... And, and Michael Elias did an inclusive interview with Andy Koska this weekend and explained that, you know, the justification for bringing him back up, which makes more sense to me. Hey, he's going to take some lumps. Right. Like, and the Orioles understand because their best guys have taken those lumps I mean, Gunners April last year. That was a tough one to watch as well, but became the AL rookie of the year. And to me, if you're the Orioles and you think you're going to be playing for stakes in October, you want that to happen now. You want that to happen as soon as possible. And Jackson Holiday, get, Jackson Holiday gets through to that other side to where in October he can be a meaningful contributor to a yeah. playoff baseball team. Yeah, I mean, we saw it last year. Grayson Rodriguez comes up at the beginning, near the beginning of the year. Again, another guy that didn't make the team out of camp. Makes his big league debut in Texas. Bounces back and forth between Norfolk and the big leagues and has his, his struggles in the big leagues until the final month or two of the season when he starts to figure things out. And I know he struggled in his one playoff start, but the expectation is the Orioles get back in that situation. Grayson Rodriguez is going to be a different pitcher when he goes back into that game. And the hope is that Jackson holiday will be a different player come September, October, when the Orioles are playing much more meaningful games than right now. 
Uh, defensively at second base, you also see the incredible tools that Jackson Holiday has. He really is a five tool player, natural shortstop, playing second base. He's got great range. He's got a good arm. Uh, he made a couple diving plays. You do see some lack of experience, though, which is understandable. You know, there was a play in Sunday's game where Brewers had runners on first and third, and they had this play where runner on first takes off, and Jackson Holiday, Adley Rutschman throws through. Jackson Holiday takes the ball at second, and the runner on third takes off and scores. Jackson Holiday gets the runner into a pickle between second and first, tag him out. But of course, the Brewers accomplished their mission, tie the game at two. And Ben McDonald on the Madison broadcast was bringing up the fact that maybe a more experienced second baseman takes a few steps forward, cuts that throw off, maybe a, a bit closer to home plate, and has an eye on that runner at third when he catches the ball so that the second that runner takes off, he's throwing back home and they're able to get that guy or at least get him in a pickle, make it a closer play. So maybe that's a moment where he goes back into the dugout. He has a conversation with the coaches and he learns from that situation. So if that happens again, he knows what to do. And you yeah. saw it happen later in the game too. There was a, another situation like that. Runners on first and third runner from first takes off and Jackson holiday got the ball and tagged the runner out because Adley threw through again, runner at third, didn't even take off. Didn't, didn't move. So he, he knew what to do in with a it. Very critical play. Also. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to, ride this point too long but i for the life of me cannot understand why the orioles did not play jackson more at second base last year right. it's just, knowing that this knew, was coming he's like a five game week shortstop player yeah and you send him down to get more experience at second base well like where where was this track where you knew that that was probably the most likely place for Enman yeah. to end up, but I don't want to belabor that. No, point. but you knew Gunnar Henderson was going to be your shortstop next season. You knew Jordan Westberg could play third, and you also had Ramon Arias there. So you knew Jackson Holiday was going to have to play second base at some point. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, I think we still see signs, as you're alluding to, that he's thinking through the position yeah. and and he's not going to be as reactive, which is where, you know, players are their strongest when they kind of know what to do when the ball comes their way um, or, you know, when the ball goes Gunner's way and he knows where to go. Um, but, you know, it's it's just one of those things that's, that's the cost of doing business. You got to, at, the, at this point, they can't go back in time and change it. Yeah. And he's just got to go through the growing pains. And I think it's better to do it at the major league level than at the AAA level. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about the outfield right now because uh, Colton Kowser has tapped into some kind of incredible like Mike Powers situation. He is on an incredible heater right now. He hit four home runs in his last four games, his first four big league homers, by the way. He's hitting 441 with six doubles and a 1.445 OPS in 34 at-bats. Now, to start the season, he was he's a left-handed hitter. He was not getting a whole lot of at-bats against left-handed pitching because they were facing those five lefties in the first 10 games. Uh, Austin Hayes was getting a lot of starts, of course. He's the veteran. And Austin Hayes has continued to struggle. And Colton Kowser, we have started to see get even more playing time, even against lefties. John Mioli wrote a piece for the BaltimoreBanner.com this morning about it, about how Austin Hayes is the veteran option. He's gotten this team through significant stretches of losing, and he brings a lot to the clubhouse and a nice veteran presence to the outfield. Colton Kowser is just flat out outplaying him right now. Yeah. And it's tough, especially, I mean, when you look at the defense as well, there, the justification just really sinks down, but Austin Hayes is a good player. I mean, yeah. he was justifiably an all-star last year. I mean, he was hitting what 300 at the break, yeah. um, oh, you know, 860 OPS or whatever it was at the time. And he was one of the best hitters in the American league last year. And now it's like, ah, get, you know, like get rid Toss of him. Out. It's like, it, and this is what it's like to have a franchise with the, the farm system that the Orioles have. The fans get immediately impatient. Um, but I, I really think, yeah, what John wrote is it's a really big challenge for Brandon Hyde um, just managing the personalities. And I think that's going to be tricky. And I think the, the upside of Austin is that he is a clubhouse guy. He is a team culture guy. And I think he knows how to, you know, read 
the situation where Colton is just, I mean, the power he's giving you and and just the heater he's on, as you mentioned, four home runs in five games. I mean, is is at bats are must watch TV right now. It's yeah. it's incredible, um, and uh, I I think it's really going to be challenging. I definitely think Austin Hayes should be worked back in, but the big question is, can he find his rhythm? while not necessarily playing every day because that's kind of where it's going yeah and every time he has struggled in the past austin ace has always been a streaky hitter in his big league career the orioles have always afforded him the leeway and the rope to get out of it because up until last year they were a losing team that didn't have many other options that could afford to you know swallow a player's struggles for the first however many months and then wait for him to get out of it and figure it out they don't have that now they're a team that is already playing catch up to the Yankees that is, you know, hoping to be in October. And they have somebody waiting in the wings right there, already on the big league roster, who is ready to contribute. They have like three guys waiting <laughs> yeah. in the wings. That's that's the thing. But yeah, I, I mean it's really interesting. And and but this is what the club is gonna be for the next few years. I mean, yeah, you know, and and with with Anthony Santander with Cedric Mullins. I mean, you have guys in the farm that theoretically, like, you know, they could play at that level and and they're going to be less expensive. Um, So, you know, this is all going to come to a head, the culture shift. And and as great as those players have been in in taking this franchise, which was down in the dumps and and lifting it up, um, you know, these are going to be questions. I mean, Ryan Mountcastle is going to come up sooner or later. you know, and and it's just, it, it's tough. I mean, those guys have a lot of pressure to perform, um, especially as they get in their later years, get closer to free agency, um, and yeah, it, that's just going to be what this clubhouse is going to be for the next few years. Yeah, Austin Hayes, Cedric Mullins, both free agents after the 2026 season. So there's going to be some time right now where they got to figure out how to dole out the playing time. And like you said, there there may be a, a passing of the torch situation at some point sooner rather than later i mean there's definitely gonna be at least one of those yeah. and pr- probably multiple and we saw it with trey man's when trey mancini was traded in the middle of the 2022 season a guy who was with that team through all of the losing years and then suddenly just gets dealt away there was a little bit of a power vacuum you know a leadership vacuum i should say but it gets filled because you trust that the guys that you have are good culture guys you already have several up and coming budding leaders on this team. Adley Rutschman has pretty much been a leader on this team since the day he arrived. You know, Mullins and Hayes have been leaders on this team. And the question is, are they going to have to pass the torch at some point here? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I think there's also, on, while we're on this topic, a, an even more difficult question, which is uh, Ben McDonald calls Colton Kowser the milkman. The milkman always <laughs> delivers. Andy Koska has been going with. Oh, that's a moon shot. Yeah, I don't know about that. And I, don't, I, don't I know have if that's a, catching I have on. a little personal favorite, milk money. Like milkman's money. <laughs> All right, you didn't like it. That's fine. Look, All right. Ben McDonald has some gravity when he drops. The milkman always delivers. The milkman always delivers is pretty good. I'm, I'm, I admit, yeah. milk money is del- derivative, but it would be a good <laughs> print headline. Sure. Milk money, like if, if Colton hits the, the game-winning home run, like milk money. Sure. Let's move on. Oh, yeah, uh, we'll start to see more and more cows, I think, come to, to Camden Yards. We've already seen a few. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting decision for for Brandon Hyde over the, these coming weeks. Austin Hayes right now, three singles in 35 at-bats right now. No extra base hits, 086 batting average. Uh, and it's just hard to look at a guy who's been a starter for the last four years, he's been a big leaguer seven seasons and say that this guy, you have to take a seat because you are struggling through the first two weeks of the season. It's really a small sample size and the guy has proven himself so much, but it's what have you done for me lately type business. And unfortunately for the Orioles, they have to worry about what High pressure. Yeah. yeah, that kind of pressure. Uh, we will see how Colton Kowser performs, continues to perform against lefties. I think that's a big uh indicator of and whether he stays in the lineup is a big indicator of what the orioles think whether he can take over that spot full time um all right let's talk about the pitching because last week it was the offense everybody was down on the offense and we thought they need an infusion of talent coming up from norfolk they got jackson holiday up here he didn't really help the offense but the offense got themselves out of the slump regardless uh now it's the pitching the pitching had a rough weekend against the brewers 
I think this Brewers team is good. That's what I'll, I'll say first and foremost. It's a veteran team. I think they are really well, tough lineup. Yeah. Really tough lineup. One through nine. Well coached. Well managed. They took advantage of every single mistake that Orioles pitchers made over the weekend. Um, and the Orioles pitchers made quite a lot. The struggles and the concern for me come from the back end of the rotation because Dean Kramer struggled yesterday or struggled Saturday, allowing six earned runs, eight runs total in four innings. Cole Irvin pitched last Wednesday against the Red Sox, another veteran team that, you know, offense is probably going to be better than they're pitching there. Five earned runs over five innings, walked three. And Dean or and Tyler Wells, I should say, four earned runs in four innings against the Brewers on Friday. And even Corbin Burns. Always going to give up a solo shot. Apparently, that's a thing now. He's always just going to give up an early solo home run. Uh, but he struggled to keep runners on base. That was a separate issue. But the back end of the rotation between Irvin, Kramer, and Wells uh, did not show themselves particularly well in the last week. No, and and more to the point on Wells and, and Kramer, um, you know, I mean, especially Wells. I mean, he's, he's talking about location problems. Him and Brandon Hyde are talking about, yeah, I just couldn't couldn't locate pitches and that that's not good. I mean, sometimes you get got and sometimes you just have a bad day or, or, or sorry, hitters get lucky and pounce on you. Yeah. Um, but when you're not putting the pitches where you want them to put them, especially with what happened with Tyler in the middle of last season, where he was arguably, you know, one of the team's aces and, and then just kind of regressed and was giving up a ton of power. Um, you really worry about that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it really, puts a lot on the timeline for Kyle Bradish, who who spoke over the weekend about his rehab on the timeline for John Means. Um, you know, I I don't think you're gonna be satisfied with that that back end of the rotation until one or both of those guys are back in it. Yeah. And it's just it's just gonna be pitching around or or working around those guys in the back end right now. And and you know, it wasn't great to hear Tyler profess that it's like yeah i just wasn't hitting my spots i don't think dean had a particularly great location outing either no um and and cole had a little bit of um you know bad luck but i mean it, he's not an elite starting pitcher to begin he doesn't have that upside of no. those other guys so it's it's they're going to be working around it until one or both of those those guys of Bradish and Means are back. Yeah, Bradish throwing a bullpen session at Camden Yards over the weekend. Uh, Means still pitching in Norfolk. I think Bradish is supposed to go to Bowie sometime this week to make a rehab start. So it's looking like Means is probably going to be back, you would think, before Bradish at this point. Maybe a toss-up. But the first one to go, I think, if you're looking at that rotation, it's a toss-up between Cole Irvin and Tyler Wells, because both those guys have had significant struggles. Cole Irvin starts tonight in the series opener, and there's a lot of pressure on him to show that he can do anything to stay in this rotation right now. Uh, if it's means that comes up first, you can make a lefty for lefty change and have Cole Irvin move over to the bullpen, make him a extended reliever like he was at the second half of last year. You're going to do the same, I think, with Tyler Wells when he comes back, when uh, means or Bradish comes back. So you can bump him back to the bullpen. We saw him excel in that role for the second half of last year. So those are two natural fits there. Dean Kramer has never been a reliever in his career. He's come out yeah. of the bullpen once in his entire career. He's always going to be a starter. And the Orioles don't have a natural replacement. It's not like, you know, Chase McDermott, Cade Povich, any of these guys, Seth Johnson is ready to go right now. But Kramer also has to continue to shove. It Last start was a, a regression after... He pitched great against the Pirates a week ago and really struggled. It was a lot of he, – he pitches to contact. That's who he is. There was some soft contact that fell in, but there was also some hard hit balls, two homers against him in that game on Saturday in a game that the Orioles actually had the lead early, rare that they have the lead early in a game, and he gave it away. Yeah, and and to, to your point, I mean, I think we're talking we're, – we're narrowing in on it because, you know, I think Tyler and Cole – those guys are, are a little more fungible. If if Bradish and Means are back, then you know I, I think that is what will happen. What you just described. Who who would go first in your in your mind? Um, Does it depend on who comes back first? Means. Yeah, and I think it, I think it depends on who comes back first uh, because the Orioles, as you know, are so matchup oriented, right? Yes. Um, but uh, you know, Dean, there's there's an issue in baseball right now where 
guys are getting injured and, and guys are are getting these serious injuries being lost for the year. So uh, something I've thought a lot about is the Orioles aren't going to probably find a lot of outside help for what they want to pay. I mean, the trade yeah. deadline is not going to give you another, you know, one one B or one C starter. Yeah, it's just not. It's just, the the price of the price of the brick is is very high, as as, as the saying goes. So I I think. Dean has just got to figure it out, and obviously he had a good le- year last year. Um, not a great playoffs, um, but I, I just think he—it's just going to be up to him to figure it out. I don't think the Orioles have another answer, as you're pointing out. The Orioles kind of had the opposite problem of their hitting in Norfolk, where there's not a lot of talent in the farm that seems like it's on the cusp of getting ready to call up. So I right. think Dean Kramer is, for better or worse, is your guy in the back end of the rotation. He's just got to figure it out. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. I mean, it's going to be incredibly difficult to pry a very good starter off a team. You know, the obviously right now, because there's so much season left, it's going to be even harder. Once you get closer to the deadline, it might be a little bit easier when teams realize they're out of the race. But there's just so few of them. There's, there's so just, few. There's so few. And Spencer Strider going on out for the year over the weekend. So Shane I mean, Bieber's there's, gone. There's yeah. there's guys who there's teams that are going to be really competitive that have big budgets that are going to be looking for starting pitching and that's gonna it's gonna be harder to get a starter this year i think than yeah. it was last year and who knows in three months time what other pitchers are going to head to the il you know what other pitchers are going to be out of it because of this increasing rash of injuries that we've seen for starters and yes the orioles i think will will look to make a move if one is available because this glut of talent in norfolk is utterly absurd but there has to be the right move that lines up. You know, yeah. the Corbin Burns move lined up perfectly. It it was a perfect, you know, confluence of events where the Brewers knew that he was going to hit free agency. They wanted to get something for him. They wanted a pitcher in return. D.L. Hall fit that perfectly. I don't know if, you know, a lot of uh, in a lot of instances when teams are dealing away a top tier starter, they want another pitcher in return. Orioles have a couple McDermott, Povich, Johnson that they could deal. But they also want to hold on to their arms as much as possible. So they're going to have to hope that some conglomeration of top hitting prospects is going to be able to get the job done. But, you know, maybe that's a question for another day because there's plenty of time to get a deal done. Lots of time. And, and I mean, plenty of time also for Dean to find his form of last year, yes. which was very good. Like, I mean, if, if if Dean is the same pitcher that he was for the Orioles last year on, on as the number four guy or number three guy, that's that's great. That's, that's a perfect. great outcome for yeah. them. Um, so I think it's it's still early. We don't know, but it's not promising when two of your your starters have a rough outing like they did. And and Cole, I mean, Cole is Cole. Yeah, so. it, you can't expect too much. I think at this point, his pitches are moving more than they have in years past. Uh, they're moving more horizontally. He's got great horizontal break. At least that's what Statcast is saying. It's just not leading to the results. I'm no. just not seeing it change. Um, well, the Orioles have another uh, home series against the Twins this week. Three games. Then they head off to Kansas City for a weekend road trip. Uh, and we will have complete coverage on the BaltimoreBanner.com. At Kyle Goon is his Twitter handle. I am at Paul Mancano and at All Banner Sports. Of course, subscribe to the Baltimore Banner. We will have another episode coming to you soon. Don't know exactly when, but we'll have one. We got a busy week with uh, Ravens draft coming up soon, and uh, you, we'll be down at the ballpark, I'm sure. Can you tell the viewers how many hot dogs you're going to eat in the next episode? <sighs> Are you done for a while? I mean, <laughs> what's the size of the well, hot dog? One and, and done on the hot dog. Crew, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I don't know if I'm if I'm breaking that back out again. Uh, maybe by popular demand but I can't imagine people will be banging down the door to see me eat another hot dog. Let's do a poll for what you'd like to see <laughs> Paul Mangano eat live on air. Let's let's not throw it to the viewers <laughs> for that. Uh, for Kyle Goon, I'm Paul Mangano. Thanks so much for tuning in.